Hello and welcome to DCP Side Quest episode number 27. It's Monday. Once again. Wow. It's Monday. As it always Monday, is, because we Monday. record the show on Mondays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Monday, Monday, Monday. Also, it's Thanksgiving week for all it of is. you Americans out there. Whoa, what's Thanksgiving? <laughs> Please tell me. It's not Christmas for another month. Well, it's basically Christmas to shop and eat, get drunk and eat lots of food. And it's Christmas light. Yeah, it's Christmas See, light. It's like a warm up. Gets- America gets video games first, and now you get Christmas first. This just isn't fair. I know. Right? <laughs> it sounds fair to me. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the elusive Black Friday deals? <laughs> That's what Thanksgiving that. no, no. is about. <laughs> you haven't really celebrated uh, Thanksgiving until you've killed somebody in Walmart. In Walmart. <laughs> until you've trampled over someone over a, a TV that's 150 bucks. Yep. Yep. America. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I hope you guys have had a fantastic uh previous week. Uh this mm. week, we what are we no, talking? No, We're terrible, talking Tefty. terrible Tefty. Terrible, I know. I'm well, awful. I'm, I'm trying to embrace Holtzman, you know, the spirit yeah. of Holtzman into my intros. You know? Don't do that. Oh, well, one can one can dream. <laughs> Come on, Briar. <laughs> Jeez, man. <laughs> So Google Stadia, guys. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I have been playing with this thing a ton since I got it. I got it on Thursday. Watch, you got it Wednesday? Is that right? Uh, did I get it one Wednesday? Sounds right. Yes. Wednesday sounds I'm gonna right. Say when, I'm going to say Wednesday. Eric's has had it for like three weeks, but still hasn't opened it yet. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't pre-order it. I decided not to pre-order it. Yeah, and what happened, Tefty? There's a Tefty running out there I in heard, the Google right? world. Somebody said, hey, are you Tefty Tefts on Stadia? And I was like, no. Oh, no. Wait, somebody took Tefty Tefts? Somebody took Tefty, man. <laughs> it was me. Actually, yeah. I blamed it on Briar, but maybe it was Eric's. <laughs> if I had thought of it, I might have done it. <laughs> I'm selling it on eBay right now. <laughs> I'll buy it. Let me Send me the link. I'll buy it on eBay. <laughs> okay. I'll give you so, a discount. Thank you. This thing is really, it's really interesting in a couple of ways. Like if you're just like kind of a nerd, it's like the technology of the system and how it works is very, very interesting and very cool. If you're just a gamer, it's hard to figure out like what this is for and like why you'd use it. But it does kind of introduce you to a world that I think could be really cool. Um, mm. The... The whole the whole thing with streaming a video game is there's a lot of benefits to it, right? It's like there's there's very fast load times. Mm-hmm. You get the benefit of very powerful hardware at a low cost. Um, yeah, you don't have to worry about uh, installing a game, updating a game, anything like that. When you decide, okay, I want to play this Mortal Kombat, you know, eleven game looks interesting. Let me check that out. You can be playing it in twenty seconds. You know, it's not. It's not about going to a store and buying a disc or downloading it like know, Netflix, hundred sampling file. something really quick. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that. I think is kind of the coolest feature about it. But it's also where Stadia to me falls apart. Like in a world where this actually had a Netflix style model, like Game Pass does, I can see this being a revolutionary gaming experience, right? Mm-hmm. But because it's attached to Google, and because I have to buy each game separately. I never anticipate no, buying games for this thing at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's the thing. If if Stadia came out, I think it's I think a few people have said they don't really know what they want to be. And I yeah. think it mm-hmm. really shows. Like if they were like, let's create this thing where you can take it anywhere, it works decently no matter how bad the internet is, and you get you sign up for a subscription and you can just play whatever games you want, then people will be like, "Damn." That's actually really cool. Yeah. 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 But that's what I was hoping it would be. But I actually forgot that, yeah. like, I almost forgot that you had to buy the games. And suddenly, like, the, you know, now, now you're ready. I almost kind of assumed it was a subscription service. And then suddenly it's like, yeah. oh, yeah. So this thing has a ton of flaws, but I could forgive all of them if they were, if it was a Netflix style gaming service. And I could just, mm. it launched with 28 games. If I, for my subscription fee, I could just play any of those 28 games whenever I felt like it on my phone, on my tablet, on my computer, or on my TV, that'd be wonderful. Like, it'd yeah. be a wonderful can, service. Can but, you explain to me exactly how where the the deviation is on that stuff of what you get as a service and what you have to actually pay for? Because I'm unclear on that. 
So if you buy a game, you can play it for free on the Stadia service, right? You, you don't up, have to I pay a monthly fee. Buy the game. <laughs> okay. If you buy a game have have on a the Stadia. <laughs> If That's you correct. buy the game, you have it for free. <laughs> no, if, you, if you buy the game, you don't have to have a subscription Got to play it. it. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. You're maxed out at 1080p, 60 FPS, <laughs> um, and you can play it on. You know, you can play it on a bunch of different devices: a phone, a computer, or on a. Uh, you know, obviously the Stadia hardware, which is a you know basically a Chromecast and uh, this rather good controller. Frankly, I like mm, this you like it. Quite okay, a bit. yeah, yeah. Um, if you pay for the service, then you get access to uh, 4K gaming, and you get access to Destiny 2 for free, Shadowkeep Edition, and I believe the other one was Samurai Showdown, which I had never played before, okay. and I quite like, to be honest with That's you. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, a big yeah, fan of Samurai fun. Showdown back in the day, on the in the arcade. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I, I, I don't know when they rebooted it and just started calling it Samurai Showdown, as opposed to, like, Samurai Showdown, like eight or nine or ten or whatever <laughs> we're at <laughs> but it's pretty fun and the graphics are pretty good i was hugely disappointed that destiny 2 isn't presented at 4k it's not like to be yeah. honest no it's I, i'm guessing it's 1080p guess and it's upscaled to 4k yeah it doesn't look great wow. to be honest with you it doesn't look super great no it um, runs at 60 fps it runs at 60 fps and you get the loading times as if you're on pc like it's really fast and you have the 60 fps but visually it's it's just not super crisp. Hmm. Yeah, it's hmm. not as good as playing 4K. I mean, it depends on where you're at. I play on a PC, and if I want to play with a controller, I, I have that option on a 4K TV, playing native 4K at 60 FPS on a TV because I have a PC. If you have a console like a PS4 Pro or an Xbox One X, you have the option of playing at 4K at 30 FPS. With Stadia, you can play at 1080p at 60 FPS. It, it, you know, it's a trade-off there. I, I think I'd prefer mm -hmm. 60 FPS, but you're also dealing with the latency involved with the Stadia. So it's not like a hugely better experience than playing at 30 FPS locally, hmm. if that makes sense. It's a cheap way to get yeah. 60. but Super cheap. Yeah, Super yeah. cheap. Yeah. Um, so, okay. But, I mean, so a lot of the functionality the that supposed to be in here isn't even here like i can't play on my phone because i don't have like one of the three phones that are supported right now oh. which are all like google uh, manufactured phones oh, no iphone right. support no iphone support yet can you just do it through the browser like if you loaded up a browser on your phone could you maybe i haven't tried that maybe you can um i have tried it on a pc which is you know a little silly <laughs> <laughs> on a pc with a 2080 ti <laughs> but i was not able to use the controller wirelessly in that configuration so i had to plug the uh, controller into my pc to play it that way which is a little weird um and it didn't look good it, like i think it was coming out at 1080p on my pc it's like well i mean i guess if i had like a macbook or something where i did you know i wasn't able to play games on it then i'd might use that option but it, it's it's really feature limited right now at launch to the point where i wonder like it might have been better just to wait six months get some of these features going right it would have yeah because they're gonna it. be they're gonna be connecting the google assistant through the controller so you can use google assistant on the controller and it links to all your other stuff in your house oh, which that's, is, yeah. that's interesting that could be really cool but it's not available doesn't yet. work yeah <laughs> yeah that's too bad so i, I just want to clarify something so you said for a subscription the main benefit is you upscale things to 4K and you get Destiny for free with that subscription. And Samurai I think there's going to be a rotating set of games that go in and out of the free, like the, the included right. with subscription. But you're uh, kind of like if you have Xbox Live or something. But you're just paying for a 4K. Like that's the main yeah, benefit. Yeah, that's a bit of a yeah. rubbish. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Rubbish. I, I can double check. <laughs> rubbish is the keyword. <laughs> I, I can, I'm going to double check that while we're actually thinking about it. Yeah. I assume uh, it's with the features missing as well. I assume they don't have that fancy multiplayer thing they showed off during their demonstration, right? Where you can. No, like, that doesn't like, work yet. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. That's one of the things I was most impressed about. I was like, that looks like a really cool system. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, yeah. So you have to buy these games. You have to. That's the. This is the problem to me. <laughs> I can right forgive here. everything about it, except that 
I have zero confidence that this service is going to exist in two or three years. Yeah, so right? why buy many, licenses? There are websites devoted to how many services Google has canceled over the years, right? The, the list has got to be 50 services long. What, like what, what tells me that Google isn't just going to cancel the Stadia? Yeah, after a couple years. If it's not a huge success. And if I go and put, you know, several hundred dollars into buying video games, and the games aren't cheap. They're normal priced video games. Yeah, that's right. Like if you want to buy Red Dead Redemption yeah. 2 right now, it's 60 bucks. And it might be Dang. gone in two years. <laughs> and it might be gone in two like, years. I always feel like if they're not going to do a subscription service, they should just partner with, like, I don't know whether they would ever want to do that, but, like, partner with the people that sell it on PC so you can buy the PC game and you also get an unlock on Stadia. That'd be great. Just for convenience. That would be amazing. That would be all right. That yeah. would be great. Yeah. It's also another thing that I think Des if you're a Destiny player, which I think we said before, then this actually works really well because of cross save. But for other things, it doesn't work as well. Like if I wanted to play continue my Red Dead playthrough, I, I can't because it yeah, doesn't no cross save. There's there. no cross mm. save with that. Whereas that would be really cool, right? Is I can play Red Dead in bed on my phone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which would have been appealing. Yeah, that whole yeah, I'm, I'm super into the phone portion of this. So like if yeah. I want to log in like while I'm away, let's say, you know, like Zer has like a really good exotic that he's selling this week and I'm away. Like it's Thanksgiving. I'm going to Philadelphia for Thanksgiving. Hmm. I could just log in on my phone, run over to Zer, buy what I need to do, log out. And like, that's awesome. That functionality yeah. is awesome about Stadia, but yeah. it's so specific to destiny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's really hard to justify this thing. And it, it, you know, okay. So, <laughs> There obviously there's a huge uh, purchase slash you know value issue that's at hand. How yeah. does the actual service for you and and well you and Watts right you guys Brian Watts you guys have used it extensively? Not extensively. No, I've, I've probably put in six hours into playing on it. Okay, how were those six hours realistically? Um, mixed. When I was on Wi-Fi, it was really hit or miss depending on what else was going on at my house. If my kids were online, okay. chatting on Discord, playing video games, if my wife was on Netflix, or if anybody started a download <laughs> for anything, it dropped pretty badly. It's the fact where the game would actually stop working altogether and lock Ooh. me out. When you're on Wi-Fi? When I was on Wi-Fi. When I was connected to a, wi a wire, like an actual... like. Uh, land cable i didn't have any issues like zero. yeah same Con connecting it through ethernet it's been totally fine for me like i could easily run strikes do bounties i could do i could do whatever um when connected yeah, yeah. interesting yeah but you had to be connected no wi-fi for it to be flawless feeling or i say flawless for, yeah. for me you're, at you're my house on the wi-fi <laughs> <It's laughs> <Yeah>. probably <laughs> if no one else is touching it yeah, uh, yeah nobody also, is in your entire city, in your entire vicinity, and they don't <laughs> yeah, breathe, right. then it's fine. <laughs> I have a weird wireless network, too, because my house gets, like, bad Wi-Fi if I have only one router. So I have a, one of those mesh networks in my house. Okay. And right. uh, the way the Stadia connects, where the controller actually connects to Wi-Fi, and then I tried to plug in a LAN cable, depending on which, which part of the mesh network the Stadia controller connected to, it may or may not work. Gotcha. Which was really frustrating. So if I want to connect to the LAN cable in my office, there's a Wi-Fi base station in my office for the mesh network. The Stadia would obviously connect to that, and then the Chromecast couldn't see the Stadia. Wow. Or uh, the service couldn't see the Stadia. Like it, it didn't it, to the to Stadia. It didn't look like the two things were on the same network, which was frustrating. Yeah. Hmm. It's very concerning that but your guys' best experience was being LAN wired in because yeah, this is yeah. supposed to be a mobile, like, you're out on the go. Like, play your mm. game on your phone. Right. Understand that my home network situation is a little bit high usage, right? right. I have two kids right. yeah, yeah. that are on their computers all the time on Discord, downloading games, doing stuff. My wife is often play watching Netflix or HBO. You know, it's like there's a lot of traffic on my network. Mm. I feel like that'd be a standard user, though. Someone who doesn't want to invest a bunch of technology 
because they have other things going on in their life. You know, they got a couple kids. I mean, they can't afford a $3,000 PC, like, right? You know, so a Google yeah. Stadia was, would be a great option to do that. But yeah. Yeah. Eric, so what are you saying? It almost sounds like, you know, back in the day when it was like, you remember when there was dial up? It was like, oh, no, can you get off the phone? I need to use the internet. Yeah, yeah, like, Yo, yeah, can yeah, you please yeah. get off Netflix? I need to play my Stadia. <laughs> right? <laughs> it needs to be one of those like internet sounds when you're playing Stadia. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like I said before, if they really dialed in on mobile gaming anywhere, take your stuff anywhere, it's going to work. Mm. It might, even if the, the quality of the actual visuals isn't that great, but it's just performs well it's smooth there's not that much input lag then that would have been great because then you spend you know honestly not a ton of money to be able to play your games wherever you want yeah. whenever you want and that would have been yeah. super cool yeah it's like a budget-minded solution for that this yeah. is a non-starter for like 99 percent of the population to me it, just because of the Probably. pricing model and because of like the limitations it has microsoft has the x cloud like that's going to be releasing soon mm -hmm. and you pair that up with a service called game pass and you're looking at a very attractive situation. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if, I don't know if this is going to be how it works, but we know that the Xbox app is coming to the Switch. We know that Game Pass already exists. We know that xCloud is coming, which is a similar service to Stadia. You start putting the pieces together, and you're looking at a Netflix-style model using hardware that you already have in your house. And you know Microsoft is very good at networking and services. Yeah. Mm. And like... Well, I could play my Xbox games on my phone, my computer, my Xbox, my Switch. Like, and I'm already paying for Game Pass, so I, I can just like start playing these things right off the bat. I don't have to download it. I don't have to update it. I just, oh, what's this cool game that, you know, Tefty told me about? I'm going to start playing it. And like in 15 seconds, I'm playing it on yeah. any piece of hardware I have. That's super attractive. I think that's what Stadia is targeting, but mm. they're not hitting it. They're not hitting yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when, when Stadia started talking, when they first announced it, and they started talking about, well, you, you could be watching a YouTube video. You know, uh, you know, here's Eric's talking about uh, Monster Hunter. I, I, and there'd be a button under the YouTube video where you could just click it and start playing yeah. it. That reality isn't here at all. <laughs> like, that's not, there's no integration in YouTube right now. <laughs> also, you, you, you don't just start playing it. You have to buy it for 60 bucks. You know, <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, like, yeah. This is this is a super half baked service right now. It should not have released right now. No way. No, they should have waited. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, yeah, because especially in this in this like you know day age when you've got like three. I mean, I know it's not a conventional console, but you've got three you know core console leaders in this in this market to like launch your system to try and compete with that and in a really bad state. I mean, that is like especially with like it's not even it'd be acceptable if it's one of those things where it's like oh a couple of things are coming like a couple of weeks after launch, but this is like. Almost everything they showed in the demonstration is not a there. A huge list of things hmm. is not coming or is yeah. not here yet. Uh, like, Do you have uh, the list of features that are coming but are not so here? Chromecast Ultra units that are out in the wild, the update isn't ready yet. So you can't just start using those. You have to have the Stadia edition of the Chromecast Ultra right now. Wow, that sucks. The Buddy oh, Pass yikes. doesn't work. Um, family sharing doesn't work. Uh, Google Assistant, we already mentioned, doesn't work. State Share, which is like this function that you can share your saves between your yeah, friends, yeah. doesn't work. Uh, Stream Connect doesn't work. <laughs> uh, you need to to initially set this thing up. You need to use. You need to download the app to your phone because yep. you can't actually set anything up on the Chromecast unit itself. So you're doing all the setup from your phone. To buy games, you have to do it from your phone or from a browser on your computer. You can't actually do any of that stuff in the app itself on your TV. Hmm. So if you Which, bought, I mean, not that you would, but if you bought a Chromecast, say like you were like, I'm going to buy it for my kids so that they can play some games so I can't afford to buy them a console and they don't yeah. have a PC and a phone. They can't do anything. Right. right That's now. correct. No. That is correct. Right now. But, yikes. But I mean, they, I'm sure they're going to fix all this. See, technically, you can't buy Google City without doing the pre-order Founders Edition right now. So it's technically in beta, right? Well, <laughs> I haven't seen beta on anything that I've looked at. Hey, well, th that's how they marketed this launch. I mean, like the real launch where everybody can use all these the stuff is going to be th those those units out the out in the wild is going to be like March yeah. or something of next year. Okay, we'll see. Oh, damn. yeah. But that, that's oh to play on your phone, you have to plug it into via USB. Wait, what? 
You have to plug the controller in via USB to your phone to but play my on phone your phone. Doesn't... Yeah, if your phone works at all. <laughs> oh. oh, you don't have a what USB on your phone. It doesn't have a I Bluetooth don't have a connector USB on my phone. Well, you get an adapter to go from like lightning to. No, yeah, you'd have to right, probably get yeah, like I'd if you're an iPhone user, right you'd have to get a lightning to USB. <laughs> you get the camera C kit. adapter. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> USB C. Yeah. Yeah, because the <laughs> controller is USB C. Which I, I, you know, I love USB C. It's a much better con connector than the older USB standards, but still, it's just craziness. Yeah, this There's is so much. <laughs> There's just so much. It's really hard to see this thing actually be successful a year from now with all the, the issues that it has. Because the, the main question, though, was when you guys were playing not wired, was it like unplayable yes. for you, Ryder? No. no? No, no, I it, didn't try wireless to be honest. <laughs> I haven't tried it. Okay. When everything was working right, it it looked pretty good. Not as good as playing on a PC, obviously. Um, and it performed pretty well. Um, but like, and that was on know, wireless. My kids stream, so like, also they boot up a stream, and bang, <laughs> you know, like it'd kill it. Everything would get like super blocky, and you know, it'd take you know ten seconds to kind of re. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So the Stay other thing Minecraft is edition. it doesn't look that good com com considering that you know, we're running on Google servers here, right? I mean, I would imagine that Google's got some pretty powerful hardware in the, you know, mm. in the cloud, but it doesn't look nearly as good as the computer I got sitting right next to me. Right. Not nearly as good. And when you consider that there's two brand new consoles coming out at the end of next year, a year from now, there's going to be two brand new consoles that are definitely going to be like playing <laughs> Destiny 2 at 60 FPS, I would hope. Like, mm. man, that makes it real hard to buy this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I was saying, like, if, it, if it's for people that travel a lot or they're just not home that often because they're really busy and it worked well, then it would have been great because those people could have still kept up with all the games and that would have been a great service. But if it's gonna have issues if someone else is using the internet you're not gonna be able to use that at a hotel <laughs> there's gonna be loads of people using the internet mm -hmm. even yeah. if you're plugged in with the ethernet i would question if it's gonna be super stable because obviously there's a bunch of people mm. using that network i am going I mean, i'll be staying in a hotel this weekend uh so uh, i will i will bring it with me i will try plug it you actually some hotels don't allow you to access to an hdmi port you know like oh, i've definitely run into that you um, mean the ethernet but port? i'll give it a shot most hotels don't give you access to an Ethernet port. Right. But HDMI? Why would you want HDMI? To plug it into your TV. Oh, gotcha. In your, in your room. I was, you know, honestly, I see this being a setup where you like prop up your phone and you play directly on a controller in front of you because, you know, a lot of the phones yeah. are big enough to have a decent experience for gaming. Oh, for sure. Or like a tablet, like a tablet a would be iPad or yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. That'd be wonderful. Um, and if that ends up working, but I mean, I am, uh, unfortunately for, for this service, I'm, I'm all Apple in that regard, and that stuff doesn't work on Apple right now. You got to have like a Pixel, a Google Pixel, See that, phone or something like that. That's really tough because like that's such a huge market share. iPads yeah. and iPhones mm -hmm. to discount yeah. that market share, I feel like is extremely short sighted. I think that's just right now though. I think that'll that'll be rolling out. Like the Stadia app is available for iPhone, so I can go onto the store. I can adjust the settings of the thing. Which, frankly, there's one video setting. And it's turn HDR on, turn HDR off. <laughs> <laughs> That's useful. Whoa. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, it's super half-baked yeah. right now. I mean, the, the core service, playing a video game on Stadia, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And like, I'll be interested to see, like, can I get this to work at a hotel? Like, I'm going to bring it to my father's house, <laughs> my father's trailer. <laughs> <laughs> he's currently living in a trailer. He bought a horse farm and he's they're building a new house on the horse farm. So he's living in a trailer That's <laughs> on hilarious. the horse farm. So oh that'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah, that'll be that'll be a true test right there. <laughs> but uh there's definitely parts about it that's cool, right? Like I yeah, said, yeah. you know, seeing Destiny in 60 FPS and loading really fast on my giant living room PC, uh, on PC TV was was great. Mm, yeah. That was that was really cool. Being able to play it on my upstairs TV in the bedroom, that was great. And having cross save again is what makes that really awesome. Yeah, because I can take my account anywhere. How um, did yeah, you I would feel about the? 
I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say I'd be interested in trying it in different places all around. Mm. So you play on uh, controller much more than I do. Yeah. How does it feel to you? Because uh, like Destiny on a controller right now just feels weird to me. The controller feels pretty good. Um, I know some people have said it's light, but I use a controller that has rumbles taken out. So I think this is actually a bit heavier than the controller I normally use. Interesting. Um, but but I personally felt like the controller was a solid feeling controller. And you didn't have a problem with the lag, the input lag? Not really. No. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have a problem with the input lag either. Um, I felt like aiming, even with like sniper rifle, trying to get headshots. I didn't yeah. play any PvP. I played. Uh, I tried to pay, play PvP, but I could never get a match because there's not enough people playing. <laughs> yeah, there's not enough. People but like either. lining up a sniper headshot, like you know, in PVE, I didn't really have a problem with. Uh, aside from the fact that my thumbs are potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was. There is a slight bit of input delay. Um, yeah. But it's a, it's the point where I could play PVE and be totally fine. PVP maybe not so much. But then again, maybe everyone has the same input lag, so maybe right. it's yeah. fine. Um, but yeah, I think I could totally do PVE. Yeah, running through strikes no was problem. no problem. You know, like doing stuff like that was just not an issue at all for me. And I like Watts says, I, I kind of like the controller. It feels good. I, I would say that I really don't like that the share button is where the start button should be. So I've taken about 80 <laughs> screenshots of what I'm doing. <laughs> That's funny. Well, you, have Google nice. Assistant. you could send it through uh through your home network to your kids. That's right. Just I've just opened my my, my previously sealed stadia and the controller is yeah. actually quite nice. I think it is. Like, oh, yeah. and, like initially just sort of it's almost like a weird blend of the Nintendo Switch controller and the PS4 controller. But it I think is, the yeah. nice about this one is because the handles are slightly longer, I normally hate um dual analog sticks in the same place i like xbox like staggered analog sticks but because mm -hmm. the pad the 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 grips are slightly longer it actually makes for quite a comfortable experience huh interesting yeah <laughs> you're like oh that's, that's my, it's my two second review of having just opened the controller <laughs> <laughs> nice. yeah it's a comfy controller even the d-pad isn't that bad like you know considering yeah. modern d-pads i don't know if there's any like really good d-pads right now as far xbox as xbox like, elite's really good Okay, that's a $180 controller, yeah, though. Yeah, and that's why. <laughs> it's a really good D-pad. Yeah. And that's the cost of Stadia, the basically. Pro controller is, the yeah. Pro controller is D-pad as well. Yeah. Is it? Um, you know, it's not bad, though. Like, I, you know, I was playing Samurai Showdown with it, and, you know, it, it felt good. Um, the sticks feel good. You know, everything feels fine about the controller. The, bump, like the, only, the only initial gripe, just from literally, like, two seconds of use, but the bumpers mm -hmm. feel a little bit light and flicky and, like, like fle uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Flimsy. Flimsy is the word I'm looking yeah. for. The, the bumper seat feel. They remind me of um like early 360 bumpers when they kind of didn't have that sort of same press to them. Mm -hmm. but still. Okay. Yeah. 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 I gotta say, overall, the controller, like especially for a first pass. Hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like Micro Microsoft's first pass was the Duke. <laughs> 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 Oh man, it's going to be interesting yeah. to see how this unfolds. And I, I don't see it having a chance in hell with Tefty. Yeah, no. I mean, it's not technically officially out yet for anybody to go and just, you know, pick up the service on their Chromecast. Like that's right. That's their end goal is you can plug in any controller and then pay like a ten dollars service or whatever to get Google Stadia. Yeah, you know? it's the pricing mm -hmm. model. That the pricing model kills it. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter how good the service is. It doesn't matter how good the controller is. None of it matters because the pricing model kills it right out the gate. They got to have it. Imagine right the if they had a Game Pass style yeah. and people were able to just sign up with and they already had a Google Chromecast. That would be super cool because mm -hmm. you're like, yeah. oh, I just paid yeah. 10, ten dollars and I can just play on this thing I already have and play all these games. That's amazing. Yeah. You know how much use I get out of Game Pass? Every month, I'm, I constantly download games out of there. I'm like, oh, City Skylines. I've never checked this out. I'll download it. And you this. wouldn't have to download it. You wouldn't even have to download it. Yeah. Pop in right away and try it. That would be like, so cool. Yeah. If yeah. they had that pricing model, and I, I don't care about the $10 a month, they could charge more than that. And I'd be okay with it because having access to any game, anytime, no download, any device, like I could be sitting at the DMV and start playing something like yeah. right away, like that is really attractive to me. But paying sixty dollars 
you know, for every game if, on a service that I don't know is going to be around in a yeah. couple of years. Mm-mm. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not doing it. Yeah. yeah it sounds yeah. risky. Yeah. Well, so it's very hit and miss. Google yeah. Stadia. It's actually Google Stadia. <laughs> Google Stadia. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till X cloud comes out. Cause like that to me is a much more interesting take on this if they Mm. if they do bring game pass to it and then like to me if they have the x the xbox app on switch like we know that's coming right yeah i thought that was a rumor that wasn't confirmed oh that's not confirmed i thought it was i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure that i I think Uh, at one point that was sort of going around so i yeah i think that's uh but i mean but even so it'd still be on like a ton of other platforms anyway so you know yeah yeah Yeah. you know even if i could play you know if i have access to game pass on my phone on my mm. Xbox, on my computer, and on my TV. That's just it, the pricing model alone. As long as the service works, the pricing model yeah. alone is just so much better. When is X? I'm adding more controllers to that as well. Right. Yeah. When is X Cloud yeah. uh, slated for release? Is that next year? Uh, I don't know. I'll With look the, it up. the new console. Mm. When all that's coming together. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. Well, <laughs> no official release date. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft is rolling out a preview beta program October 2019, so you can you can probably sign up for the beta, which maybe so they, they must be into. trying to align this with next year's console. I'd imagine, maybe, maybe, yeah. and having like a closed beta probably smart idea. Stadia, you might have want to look into this because mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this, true. The initial the initial impressions on this from just about every review I've seen. Are unless it's just from a technical side, like the people who are looking at it just from a technical side are like really impressed with it, mm-hmm. right? Like, wow, this looks really good. I can't believe this is a streaming video game. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we've seen this before. Nvidia has a similar service. We saw on live years ago. Sony has a pre- similar service. I've used the Sony service, and admittedly, I haven't used it in probably four or five years. It was horrible. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was bad. Um, but like on a technical level, like the actual act of playing a video game. It's really impressive how fast that lag is. Like, Digital Foundry did a lag test on it, and it was pretty impressive. Really? Yeah. I need to watch that. Like, I think it was like a an average of like sixty milliseconds of lag per, like above what you'd expect on a normal video game. Mm -hmm. Because there's like there's lag on a normal video game, right? Yeah. Mm. You know, and like. It's it, like if you use your PlayStation 4 controller on Bluetooth mode, there's more lag. And if you have your TV in not game mode, there's more lag. So like there's there's lag no matter what game you're playing on what system. There's built-in lag. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. So this adds more lag, obviously. But it's about 60 milliseconds, I think, above what kind of is baseline for a video 60 game. milliseconds. Yeah. Hmm. It's not insignificant. <laughs> No, but so like on Red Dead like, Redemption, it's like a difference of like 180 to 120. Right. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I guess the sort of thing where like at this stage you would play, it would be all right for like sort of cinematic experience kind of games where you can just sort of like, you know, play and enjoy the enjoy the journey. But if you want to play anything remotely competitive, then probably not. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. I could play Death Stranding and build roads in bed on Stadia, I'd be down. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I can't. Yeah. Right? And there's no cross save, so. Yeah, the cross save, yeah. yeah. There's just a lot of pitfalls with this, unfortunately. It's, it's, a, it's a bummer, but. Maybe xCloud. Maybe xCloud will be the one that actually gets all this stuff right. Like you're saying, Briar, with all the different platforms. It's already got Game Pass in there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you if you primarily play on Steam, you can already kind of do this. Mm-hmm. You know, except instead yeah. of playing on Google services, you're playing off your, your computer's uploading the image to your phone or to your tablet. And you're playing that way. Yeah. Mm. And then you do have cross-save because you're playing your PC. <laughs> you know, like... Right, Eric. Maybe they'll just like brush it under the carpet and then re-release it in a few years as Google Studio. Studio, <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> Google that. Stadia Plus. Eric, I'm really curious about how it, your experience is with it once you open it up and actually use it um, over <laughs> over in the UK. Because like well, right right now, it's it's great. I mean, it, it, I, it, I put my coffee mug on it. It's, it's it's a really nice stand at the moment. You checked out the clickiness of the buttons. It was like, well, it's kind of screen. I mean, I, mean, I wow. did, I did. Like, I mean, I mean, the packaging. I'll, I'll I'll give you like even in the UK, like there's there's no latency on the packaging. It's quite nice. Okay, and nice. Quite, That's quite good well, enough. Uh, well, well produced. I mean, the graphics are quite cool. I will say the logo looks more like it's I don't know one of those like fancy soap companies. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't or, necessarily see this. It looks like it's the Sharpie logo. Like if Sharpie was the yeah, logo, it does kind of. Or or it's a new fitness band company. You know those fitness bands where like stretch. <laughs> true, sure. true, true. Yeah, go it sounds room. like it could be a fitness band. <laughs> I, feel, I, feel, I, feel, I feel like program. I feel like the way the logo is designed, they were in the boardroom and they're like, right, well, we're already struggling with all the services, but oh wait, we forgot we need a logo, and someone's like, it's all right. Okay, we're good. Let's go. <laughs> and <laughs> like, yep, sign it off. It's fine. Get that done. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely gonna like, I, like this weekend. I, I was I was busy the past weekend, but this weekend I finally got a clear weekend. So I'm actually gonna set it up. I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna see what it's like on UK internet, um, and then I will report back next week. How much setup is really fast, which is good. Nice. Yeah, if mm -hmm. you get your email, that you have to get this like code that they send you via email, yeah. and for a lot of people, uh, that code has been delayed. I'd be so bummed out my, if luckily, I didn't get my, my code. Yeah. My code arrived before my before my stadia, so at least I've yeah. got that. Mine arrived like literally like at the same the same time. Like, <laughs> oh. like within they like were a couple tracking hours. The delivery guy and they were like set and <laughs> launch the code. That's crazy, man. Like it seems like the launch has been really rocky for this, which hmm. maybe by the time it's officially out out for everyone, like I said, who has a uh, Chromecast, maybe a lot of this stuff is going to be ironed out. Except for the pricing Maybe. model. <laughs> that won't be That's enough. the thing. That I mean, if you look at the games that they have, they have Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Destiny 2, Final Fantasy 15. Uh, what else is on here? Uh, Metro Exodus, Mortal Kombat 11, Rage 2, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Red Dead Redemption 2, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. They have a bunch of really good games on here. But you got to pay for them individually. And they're kind of old games at this point. So, like... <laughs> If I was and like, all 60 oh, bucks? Know, I missed out. Let's see. Oh, no, let's no, let's take a look at Steam. Bucks. Okay. And how much these games cost. I mean, it's the same price, not essentially, all right? On Steam versus uh, that. Shadow of the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition is 23 bucks. All right, let me look at what it is on Stadia. Oh, I got boy. the app up. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I'm probably going to have to search. It's like a that. smoking bullet. <laughs> <laughs> is there no search function? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! No, that's coming later. That's coming later. That, <laughs> scrolling is coming. Here. Yeah, Tomb Raider. The first Tomb Raider definitive edition is nineteen ninety nine. If you're a pro member, it's ten dollars. Oh, oh you get a Shadow discount. of the Tomb Raider. Oh. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It is the definitive edition. Is sixty dollars. The one on Steam that's twenty three bucks. Oh. Well, this is the definitive edition. I don't know if that's the definitive. This edition. the definitive edition. Um, apparently is usually a hundred and nine dollars, but this is twenty three dollars. Oh on my Steam god! Right now. Oh. Interesting. Uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood is thirty dollars. Rage two sixty dollars. Let's have a quick wait, wait. Wait. Let's let's have a quick catch up. Where are we at, Watts? Wolfenstein? Rage two. Let's take a look at Rage Two. Wolfenstein um, Youngblood. They should be giving that away for it's free. It's still sixty bucks. Rage Two is <laughs> still, still 60. okay. 60 Comparable on that. Steam. All right. Wolfenstein. Let's take a look. Wolf. Wolfenstein Two. Youngblood. Youngblood. Twenty nine ninety nine. Okay, so even Steven there. Okay. Even Steven. <laughs> hmm. well, there was Mortal Kombat Eleven, right? Oh, how about Assassin's Creed Odyssey? Because that's a fair that. That's fairly old, right? Assassin's Creed Odyssey is still sixty bucks. All right, it's sixty bucks, but if you're a pro member, it's thirty bucks. Yeah. Google Stadia Whoa. wins half price. Well, yeah. that's it. There we go. Mortal Kombat Google Eleven. <laughs> Mortal Kombat Eleven, I think, is still yeah. sixty. Yeah, it's forty one ninety nine if you're a pro member, which is still a lot of money. Yeah. But then, so you have to well, so you have to pay to be a pro member. Ten bucks. So yeah, then you have to take into consideration how many games am I paying for each month? And will Does this service be out? around in a year? Yes. Yeah. I've worked it out. I've worked out who the target market is for Stadia. Right. Yeah. 
people that are looking to get good at fighting games, you see, fighting games are a complex beast, right? And one yeah. of the struggles <laughs> that people have is learning frame data. Now, the yes. problem with seeing frame data is, you, is things move so fast. So you play on Stadia where you have latency and you'll be able to physically count the frames in fighting games. So you train on Stadia and then you go to the real console. I found it. I've and even it with out. the because of the lag, you're going to be amazing. So this is a exactly. this is a, a fighting game trainer to get people <laughs> yeah, into exactly. the industry. Got it. You in, you input like know, the quarter circle work flat and, open, <laughs> and then like you, you you input it right. You do like your quarter circle, then you go away and get your lunch, and you come back, and the Hadouken comes out. And you're like, Whoosh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. I like it. It's yeah. just great. Cool. Yeah, I I don't think that this type of service is necessarily a bad thing it's just the pricing model the pricing mm, model yeah. combined with the fact that you have no idea if they're going to support it for a year two years three years yeah that's the biggest uh, kicker There's no confidence in google yep. i'm mm. even a service pricing around. and whether or not it's actually going to be around so you'd actually be able to use those 60 dollar titles that you spent money on that's right mm. yeah because again the best market for this is someone who is in a very tight budget right like a super tight budget and also on the go this would be perfect but none of that mm. adds up in terms of the actual pricing model and the technology side because like you need to be able to play on crappy wi-fi you do yeah, yeah. that's essentially what forget. It, if it works on crappy wi-fi then that would be awesome mm -hmm. but don't forget in the future it's also supposed to support 8k <laughs> <laughs> so for so for this budget device, for the for this is this is where Google is so confused. I'm like, this would be great for a consumer who maybe can't afford a console. But also, if you want 8K with this TV, that's probably going to cost you 10 grand. Hey, you can, but it might that's why it. it's oh, it's an identity crisis. It doesn't know what it <laughs> yeah. wants to be. Yeah, oh, I don't okay. I don't know if the if the argument that it's for somebody who can't afford a home console is going to work out. No. Yeah, like, definitely not. Because the they no need really loading, good internet, so. Right, the no loading, no, you know, no waiting, like just, just hit the button and start playing. That is really cool. Mm -hmm. It's for a busy man that travels, busy travel guy yeah. who goes and to like, all the you know work what they're gonna do soon? stuff. The original pitch of like, oh, I'm watching Watts play Monster Hunter. Let me check this game out and click on a button on YouTube and, and try I'm it out. playing it. That's fucking dope. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not paying sixty dollars to check something out because yeah. I, I saw somebody playing it on YouTube. You know, yeah, like, you gotta. On state. It's got to be on a subscription service to work that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. too bad. Yeah, guys, we should talk yeah. about other topics before the show's over. That's the show. It's uh... <laughs> that's the show. <laughs> well, that's the old side quest, the uh, Stadia side quest. <laughs> so, Monster Hunter World. Speaking of what's going on yeah. there, there's yeah. news, right? They got some new stuff, some Eric's. new new stuff. So Eric's are watching. Yeah, it's, it's, you it's in, yeah. Eric, you go, uh, go for it. Go. So for they, it. so they, they, they had, a, they had this weekend was Monster Hunter Festa, which is their big festival. They have it every single year where they have all like the speedrun competition. And alongside that, they dropped a teaser for not one but two upcoming monsters. Because uh, mm -hmm. of course we have the update coming on December the fourth, which will be the next DLC monster edition. And that is Stygian Zenoga is the first one, which is a subspecies of Zenoga. So as opposed to being the Thunder Wolf, it's now a Dragon Element one. Really, really cool. It's got he obviously like typical... Dangerous. Yeah, he's very dangerous. And kind of typical sort of subspecies thing. He behave, behave like somewhat familiar, but it's also got like a whole new suite of moves and everything. But they and then also teased another monster, which they haven't named yet. So we don't technically speaking know what it is. Um, but it's like this big, ominous looking back black dragon. Mm. People have been speculating that it may well be like a version of Xenojiva because you kind of when you sort of compare them like side by side, you can sort of see like head similarities. And supposedly in the story, when we first fought Xenojiva, it was only freshly born, so mm. this could be like a fully grown one. Uh, and there's also the interesting idea that Xenojiva is weirdly absent from Master Rank right now, so maybe it kind of fills fills that interesting gap. That's but the interesting thing is that yeah, they've they've got uh, so like the plan right now is that third of December they have a developer diary, which is where they'll kind of they always do that just before an update comes out and they kind of talk about it. So they'll obviously show that, but they've got a second developer diary on the fifth. So it's quite interesting to sort of think that they might you know for like for the December period might be dropping not just one but two monsters, which would be really really cool. That's cool. Yeah. That'd be dope. Mm. Yeah. And it's, yeah, yeah. it's an it's yeah, it could be a Xenojiva thing, it could just be a brand new dragon that just looks mm. like Xenojiva. So mm. that's exciting. 
Good stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And of course, with that, it also means you get a whole new sets of armor, you get a whole new sets of weapons. It'll be interesting to sort of see how they introduce it as well, because, you know, one of the other things they added in uh, Master Rank, for example, was like Kul Taroth, who introduced like that. Well, not introduced because it was in original Master Hunters in a different capacity, but introduced like the relic system into World. Um, so it might well be that maybe they're adding like two monsters because one fills the conventional space and one fills like this bigger, um, you know, kind of siege effort so yeah there's uh that is that is what we have to look forward to so a couple of weeks from well i guess a couple of weeks from today sort of thing we'll be uh closing in on a new monster and that'll be that'll obviously kind of run out for this year but they've obviously said that as part of the roadmap there are more monsters coming in the new year um so yeah iceborne is still uh still going strong and they'll have That's a seasonal great, event yeah. as well nice so they'll have uh instead of being like christmas it seems like they themed it around like chinese new year this time which is really cool yeah um, so obviously like all like thematically matching armor sets and stuff so yeah so good stuff Quick question. How much have I missed if I played up until Borderlands 3 and then haven't played since? When you played up until Borderlands 3, how far in Iceborne did you get to? I unlocked what uh, did you find? I unlocked like the beginnings of the the end world that had the uh, everything all the maps combined. Oh, the guiding lands. Yeah. The oh, guiding lands. Oh, yeah. then you're fine because cuz then then I mean cuz the thing is like how, where you are right now means that you have basically completed well it means you have completed the story. So anything new that gets added means you're automatically able to just dive in and play it anyway. Right. So while you have missed uh, Rajang, which is like one of the additions, and of course that expands the Guiding Lands, um, generally speaking, you haven't missed a great deal. Okay. There's obviously like, the main, the main thing you probably would have missed if you didn't do enough of the Guiding Lands stuff, there's a few of the end game monsters like Silver Rathalos, Gold Rathian, mm -hmm. uh, that you can unlock, and they do have some of the best gear. By leveling up but... the Guiding Lands sections, right? So then they show yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, or, or alternatively, you just get to like Hunter Rank, 125 and then you can unlock a double quest and oh stuff. gotcha so, okay um cool. so you can do either one but yeah so there's so, but you haven't really missed a great deal so even if you just decided to jump back in for this you could basically just jump straight back in and farm the new set and you know you'd be fine so nice you're in a good place cool. yeah i need to get back on monster hunter right i want to i want to get i want to get ready to fight all these games angry. distracting me like death stranding and destiny a, come on really <laughs> we have to do this year a game of the year list we have to yeah. do it yeah. I don't know how are we, we got to discuss how we're going to do it. Maybe we can get some chat suggestions for Anthem, like how to format Mike that. Mike drop. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to war for Anthem. <laughs> Although, did you wait? We did, did we just did we discuss this on the show before? Or did we not? No, they, we didn't. They, were, no huh? they did, of course, say that they were there. There are rumors that they are, well, not rumors, apparently, like Jason Schreier. I mean, technically speaking, it's still a rumor. They are doing some work on uh, rebooting Anthem. Like, apparently, they've been That's tearing right. it down and telling the studio, doing a complete re, re overhaul. A and quote unquote, they've got Taken like, King style, right? Yeah, yeah. And so there's no like timeline on this yet, right now, which I think is the right approach because I don't want to kind of yeah. say to people, hey, you might be in three months. But uh, the fact yeah. they're actually doing that is, I mean, because I, you know, we always sort of said before, like, I felt like, Okay, there was a lot wrong with the game, but the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, the foundational, the fun stuff you do was there. So, like, the game yeah. was yeah. fun to play. Yeah, just give me stuff to play. And and I unique, too. Agree. unique as well. Like, I don't, I can't think of a game right now that gives you what Anthem does with that flying combat and the combo system, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Put together, I uh, think they should just say this is a game where you fly, take all limitations of flying off, and create the entire game around people flying. Minecraft mech flying. Yes. No Man's Sky edition. No Man's Sky. You might yeah. never meet anyone. The combat system I found to be incredibly yeah. satisfying. And like, I could mm -hmm. play, replay, like, what, are, what were they called in that game? The Strongholds. Strikes, basically. Strongholds. I could replay yeah, those over yeah. and over again. I was having a good time because the combat was yeah. just just challenging enough that it kind of, it it kept me using those combos and, like, trying to mm -hmm. maximize my DPS. But there's so much wrong with it, like Eric said. like Yeah, the loot system. Mm -hmm. It's just... It, well, it was really harsh when we found out that the loot system was basically complete bullshit and that you were stronger with, like, the starting gear yeah. than you were with the stuff that you got out of, like, Master Level 3. Yeah, yeah there was some... That was like, well, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah, a lot of a lot of Munka going on in there. If they, <laughs> if they could really revamp that game, I'm I'm in. Like, I'm definitely going to yeah, check it 100%. out. Yeah, 100%. They but, need to optimize it, too, because, my dear Lord. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Yep. Yikes! They, um, people were I was convinced that this game was dead. Though. That game, man, it's rough. Yeah, I was convinced this game was dead because I hadn't heard anything out of them in so long. Mm. And then their like their lead, their head of the studio left, or I don't know what his mm. title was, but like 
you know, the face of that game took off. <laughs> I was I'll like, be oh, honest. I'm not surprised. <laughs> not a good look. I, I'm not surprised because I feel like they put a lot of time and energy and effort into that title and they knew yeah. where it could go. Like I, you know, they, yeah. they, they're, they can see those things that you saw too, Briar and be like, yeah, there's right. something mm-hmm. here and there's a lot but they wrong. Had just dropped, uh, uh, mass effect the year before like they dropped yeah. that so hard there's like but, incredible story holes that we're supposed to get dlc and they just didn't. yeah no totally mm. but i i guess i i look uh, at it as like not just the company as one singular thought process but like a whole faction mm. of different groups working on multiple projects and thinking about what can actually be done and what type of time right. frames i feel like they'd look at anthem yeah. and be like okay clearly there's a loot problem there's an optimization problem and a progression problem you know, rearrange some stuff, put a timeline for development. They could turn that around because the assets are technically already made. They just have to reposition and shift things around to actually create an interesting loop for progression in the end game. Mm-hmm. And then you have a solid yeah. anthem experience. Yeah, I think there's definitely potential for it to kind of like be rebuilt as well. Because I mean, the thing is, like, you know, I know everyone was sort of like worried when they had like major people from the studio leaving, and like, you know, I, I mean, no disrespect to the people in the studio because I know there's like, you know, I know a lot of people there that worked with, like incredibly hard on it. But when you remember that big article that came out from Jason Schreier about like what went wrong with Anthem, one of the kind of big um, note points from that was also that there was like a big kind of struggle when it came to leadership in terms of people not necessarily knowing the direction they wanted to go, and they were like very kind of different directions so i feel like you know you've seen this all sometimes with like other projects as well where sometimes like leadership steps away from it and then someone else gets to take the helm and then suddenly someone with fresh ideas is like yeah. all right let me just lead the charge so it could actually be you know not to say that obviously the leaders from before didn't know what they were doing but it could be that someone given a new opportunity might be like all right let me make this the game i think people want so yeah be cool. be. i think that happens all the time you know people get burnt out on the perspectives and need to switch projects mm. and then someone comes in with a fresh look and can revitalize it the opposite can happen too. Somebody come in with a fresh look and just completely kill it and be like, whoops. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Guess the what? one thing they do need to do though, they did in that kind of rumor article, they were like, they haven't quite worked out how they were going to deliver it yet. They were like, whether they do it in incremental updates or whether they do it something like that. And they were also like, they haven't worked out if they're going to sell it. Like two things for that. One, they need to do it as one big update because if they're doing incremental Agreed. things, like people will just not be there. And yeah. secondly, they can't be selling this because if they come in and around, they're like, hey, you know that anthem that didn't do very well? If you buy it again, we promise it's going to be good this time. Like, no, 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 no. You yeah. just need to be like, update your game. Let's go. Yeah. The Diablo approach. Like what so. with uh, No Man's Sky yeah. did, right? No Man's Sky came out and people were like, no this Sky, is yeah. all a lie. This is awful. And now they're kicking ass. Yeah. And they're crazy. They, they that I love updating. that the entire community hated. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. The genesis oh, of hate to evolution, to love for that game that's happened. For No Man's Sky? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's incredible. Yeah. Okay, but they've they've done I, uh, massive changes and obviously have fixed a lot of those wrongs and added a lot of innovation. I mm. haven't played it in a month, but I was putting a lot of hours into No Man's Sky and VR, and it was an amazing experience. That's cool. That's something I've yet to experience. I need to at some point. Uh, oh, really cool. did you guys hear that we're getting a Half-Life game? Right? Oh, oh my God, we didn't Alex? even talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of VR, like people are really upset that this is a VR title. I am super hyped about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't wait. It's going to be like a full-length Half-Life game yeah. in VR. Like, a, is it only going to be for their VR system? Uh, Steam's not usually like that, or Valve's not usually like that. My guess that is it'll work with pretty much whoever. I mean, PlayStation their VR excluded, obviously. Cool. Exclusive to Glo- Google Stadia. Because their yeah. their their <laughs> VR system actually tracks each of your fingers. Oh, wow. Which is yes, the insane. Valve Index does, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's cool. really um, cool. That's a new yeah, level of immersion right there. My guess is that you'll be able to play it on an Oculus or whatever, because you could. there's mm. Oculus support in Steam. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. But... Probably to get the best experience, you're gonna want the index. So the so, so there's a section of people that are like, "What? This needs to be on mouse and keyboard." I can't believe you'd make a, a I can't believe you'd make a uh, a new new game and not support mouse and keyboard. This is ridiculous. And then right. Valve said that the the core of the game is built for VR. Like you can't have the same experience in the game without the VR system. Mm. Yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah. Because if Valve yeah, says I mean, you have to have the VR setup for this to be the experience, then mm. I believe them. 
honestly. Yeah, I, was, I, think so, I mean, these are the guys. The experience. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. These are the guys. I mean, they their excuse for not making Half-Life 3 all these years is like, you know, Half-Life 1 was like a revelation for, for first-person shooters. And Half-Life 2, again, was like the reason we were making these games is because like we had these ideas for a really cool thing. And like we just haven't had that like inspiration for a Half Life three. Mm. This isn't Half Life three. This is more of a side story. But still, like it's really exciting. It's been a long time. When did the last Half Life Half Life episode two? I, I'm looking at it right now. Like came 15? out in 2007. Yeah. How, I, well, okay. So Half Life two came out in 2004. Half Life two episode two came out three years later in 2007. Yeah. So it's still been crazy. 12 years since episode two. It's a long. And time. we never got episode three. <laughs> I mean, they started printing money on the Steam store. They're like, all this money keeps printing. I guess we'll keep print more yeah. money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is really exciting if you're a VR fan. Like, really exciting. Do if we know not, if it's going to be 100% VR? Because, you know, there's some VR games where you can play it, just not in VR. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be a VR game. Okay, they, That's what they said, that, like, this game yeah. was built specifically yeah. to it experience is, yeah. VR and that the mouse and keyboard just doesn't even give you the the abilities that they have in the game which yeah. i that's what intrigues me because i'm not really sold yeah. on vr like briar is briar you you are obviously all about trying out these different <laughs> vr headsets and i look oh, yeah. to you for that knowledge but i'm still kind of like i ah, you know it's more of like a i might use it for one game and then forget i had it for two years type of yeah. setup that's how i feel right now yeah. but if a game comes along that is extremely revolutionizing like what the what this seems like it could be, then I would definitely be interested in investing in it and hopefully see other games. Well, I feel like that. Yeah, because I feel like I feel like where we are in the in the kind of sphere anyway. Like even though there have been some great VR titles, I still feel like VR is very much still in that position where like a lot of stuff still feels kind of like a tech demo. I feel like you need someone definitely. to almost lead it and be like, "This is the definitive game that suddenly says VR is now on the map and people are like, okay, now we've had a good fully fledged AAA experience that I can play end to end in VR." And then you can kind of have that. Yeah, it's like Halo yeah. and Xbox. To be clear, like I do believe that there are VR games that are like absolutely like No Man's Sky in VR. I think is a reason to buy into VR. Like it's okay. that amazing. The first time you get into your ship and fly your ship in, into outer space, and you're like sitting in your ship, it's outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it is. And you're sitting in your ship. Really crazy. <laughs> and you're sitting in your ship. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like like Eric said, it's like a lot of my favorite things in VR are like things like Super Hot or Gorn uh, that are like I mean they're smaller experiences, they're lighter experiences. You're done with them in a few hours. Like th even Beat Saber, you know it's it's really popular, but it's you know it's a you know it's a game where you hit blocks to the sound of music. You know, it, yeah. it, to the, mm -hmm. you know it's it's one of those like driving games. I, I would say if you're a driving game fan, VR is a must have because mm. like immersive, right? It's immersive and you can look around a corner before you're driving around a corner. <laughs> like you do when you drive. <laughs> like, True. You don't, you don't just start turning a corner <laughs> without like looking first, you know, like that's funny. Yeah. That's it's revolutionary. VR is revolutionary for video game or for driving games. Is the index the best VR headset out there right now? Uh, it's the best of the ones I've used that are available now. There is a new... Is it the most expensive, uh, too? Yeah. Yeah, right? Like, How much is what it? What are we looking at? Uh, it's $1,000. That doesn't involve a computer or anything, right? That's just the setup? Yeah, it's the, the headset, the index controllers, and the boxes that you mount to your the corners of your room that kind of like shoot the lasers out for tracking. Can I get that in Google Stadia? <laughs> no, but you can, for that. you can get Oculus right now for four hundred dollars, and it's like ninety percent as good. Okay, doesn't track my fingers. You though, just can't. Right? You can't do the tickle fingers. You can't walk it around. It does track your fingers. The <laughs> Oculus does track your fingers. Imagine in Destiny. Capacity. So maybe it'll work great then. Imagine Destiny. I think it probably will. If you're like a crazy warlock, as most warlocks are, they're super crazy walking tickle around. And they're like, <laughs> that's that's your melee to zap someone. Like if you don't do that, you don't actually do the melee. I got real into a game called Onward, which is basically Call of Duty in VR. And it is amazing how much slower Call of Duty in VR is compared to Call of Duty with a mouse and keyboard. That's funny. Like, 
Uh, you're walking around at like real time walking speeds, yeah. <laughs> not 30 miles an hour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. It is. It's hilarious. Well, I'm curious. Uh, was there any dates associated with Alex yet, or no? Uh, I don't know. Let me look it up real quick. I feel like this is going to be a year how, or two. I don't know how out. I feel about this whole looking up stuff. <laughs> I feel like we should just be making wild guesses going. It's coming stuff. out next week. All right, guys. Great. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> I'm going to say April 17th. Hmm. I don't even know what day that is. Of March 2020. Pretty close. Wow. Wow. March 2020. Maybe, wow. maybe it'll get delayed and then it will come out, out in April. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> now I'm like, crap. I have to like finance a thousand dollars before then for this. There's also a trillion <laughs> games coming out in March 2020. So that's yep. exciting. Uh Verge, yeah. the Verge article, which I don't know, you know, how you feel about the Verge. Um, they say it's it'll be compatible with PC VR headsets. Oh, okay. Not okay. just not just so you can get Oculus and it's way cheaper. Yeah, yeah for way the cheaper. Oculus the finger tracking. Something has changed too. The Oculus Quest, which is the standalone Oculus, just got support that you can now plug that into a PC and play PC oh, VR games. Nice. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, which makes it to me super attractive because being able to play Oculus Quest like in your backyard is kind of an amazing experience because you can like romp. Like if you have a big open space, you can like romp around out there. You know, like you don't Ryder's have to worry about like, doing, bumping doing into furniture and shit. Trying to play Call of Duty IRL, he's just like he's like everywhere. he's like actually the Ready Player One people on the street with headsets walking around. <laughs> I was when I I I returned mine, uh, but I when I had it, I was gonna bring one of my kids and have him film me at the park that we have down the street, just like out in the open, because I thought it would be hilarious. Just it go, would like, be hilarious. Prancing through the <laughs> metal. <laughs> Make sure we get uh, zoom in on all of the judging people's faces. Ideally. Yeah, people doing head turns and being like... Just cut to people going. <laughs> what the hell? Um, but yeah, that's that's a super attractive pro, uh, thing now because you get kind of the best of both worlds. You're wireless with the Quest and you can get play PC VR games. That is, yeah. Hmm. Definitely best. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Interesting. Cool. I do have a question. I have, a, I have a controversial question to round out side quest. Okay. And that is, uh, why do people like how Half Life? You see, I, as, as somebody that has, an, uh, there's somebody that has never played Half Life. I've, I've, I've looked at it and I'm just like, this game looks boring. <laughs> why would it's, I? Why? why it was is a it, time and place thing. Right at the time, you had to be there, Eric. At, okay. Yeah, at the time, <laughs> first person shooters were like uh, Duke Nukem and Quake and things like that, which were really not so much about story they were just about like um shooting stuff and blowing stuff up what half-life brought okay. to the table was like a really immersive story and cinematic storytelling which was completely new for the genre and right. really it like you felt like you were uh gordon freeman okay and, like, yeah. the, it, it, it was really different in that way and then the second one brought to the table i mean it, if you're already invested in the story of Half-Life, you know, it still continued that, but it also brought this incredible physics engine where okay. you can manipulate objects around you in a way that you never could before in video games. Right. And, it and that's where the Gary's Bond stuff came from. Yeah. What's, yeah. what's the engine yeah. that Half-Life was built on? Do you know? Source. Is that source? Is that where source came from? Cause that's, mm. I, I, I'm, yeah. not sure, but I know I did, that was one I of the major from... groundbreaking things as well as that engine ended up laying the foundation for a ton of first-person shooters that came yeah, out. Yeah, Counter-Strike. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Counter-Strike. And Mod, then when you say with, with regards to like the storytelling stuff, because I forgot the dates, was Half-Life before things like GoldenEye and Halo? I think it was happening around the same time. Right, okay. Because I had like the GoldenEye experience for like my FPS. I've had, I had like the Halo yeah. experiences. But like for me, right. Half-Life, I just kind of completely missed. So everyone always always like, yo, I need Half-Life 3. And I'm just sitting there I was like, I couldn't really care less, but I'm just like, but obviously it's an important thing. And I'm just like, I wanted to understand why people like hold it in such a high regard. So I think it was around I the see. same time. And you're probably okay. having, you're probably having like revolutionary experiences depending on just where you're playing. Like unless you're playing on PlayStation yeah. and you just never got a good FPS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I my time on Nintendo. It was, it was great. It definitely was a renaissance type of thing. Cause obviously today it's right. like, well, what the hell but that's because it was hmm. one of the 
it was one of the first, not like the first, but it was one of the first like groundbreaking mm. narrative storytelling first person shooters where it was it was like oh, okay. this is different. You know, your character is being affected by the mm. environment and things are happening and there's a as changes and that creates like a, a an immersive experience that we kind of take for granted okay. nowadays. Mm, true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the same as in movies. Like somebody does something really innovative in movies and then everybody copies that for the next 20 years and you go back and watch yeah. that original movie and you don't see what's so original and amazing about it because at the time, the Matrix, bullet time was like mind-blowing <laughs> when you saw it the first time in 1999 and then yeah. every movie used it for the next 10 years. True. Going back and watching the Matrix as like, you know, somebody who wasn't there to experience it for the first time, not as mind blowing, right? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the Matrix effects true, true. don't really hold up too well. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it in a long time. I'll have to go watch it. I mean, they're not bad, great. but they're not like, oh my God. You know, they're, they're clearly, oh, this is, yep, this is early, late 90s, early 2000s. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. At the time, though, it was, it was mind blowing. Yeah. At the time. Yeah. Bullet time specifically. Yeah. And yeah. What was it, the scene Definitely. where he's in the fight in the lobby of the hotel. Yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. mm. That was outstanding. Where they're just blowing everything up. But also you watch a scene like that and you're kind of like, why? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we can. We can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like you kind of take for granted also Hollywood uh, martial arts scenes and sequences have gotten yeah. really advanced now and well mma hit the scene so now you can actually see what works in real martial arts like you watch ufc and you can see that the wire foo that they use in crouching tiger hidden dragon is completely ridiculous yeah. right so that kind of that kind of like kung fu just looks ridiculous now when you watch a movie that uses it or a tv show that uses it now you you expect everybody to be using these like hard Hitting yeah, I had, MMA. I, I had watched The Matrix, the original, and then I watched Ant Man, and you don't think of Ant Man as an amazing martial arts <laughs> experience. You're, it's like it's Ant Man, you know. No. But yeah. the difference was so wide and clear. It's like <laughs> Hollywood has jumped light years in martial arts effects they and, really and sequencing from then yeah. to now, and we take it for granted. Honestly, we really do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're living in a golden age right now for, for movies and for TV. Yeah. You know, like the stuff that they're doing right now, you know, for, for TV, I think especially the TV quality of like writing, special effects, the amount of money they're putting into TV shows has right. grown, grown exponentially. Yeah. Mm. Cause it used to be the case where someone would say, okay, we're instead of making whatever two, as a movie, we're going to make a TV show and people be like, oh, no, uh, it's because it means it wouldn't look as good. It wouldn't be as well mm. written. But now there's so much money put into that that it's really kind of the same thing. Yeah, I think it's better in some I mean, a, a lot. Of, in a lot of cases, it, it is. Yeah. You also get to experience it for longer. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, not they just, can explore mm -hmm. characters more deeply. They can yep. instead of doing, you know, the. Like if you're a big fan of a comic book, instead of having to wrap up a whole comic book in an hour and a half, you get yeah. eight to ten hours to to go through, you know, that comic book. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of TV, can I hit you guys with some breaking news? Real Let's quick? have it. It's yeah. not really that much news, but Wait, do we have a breaking news sound effect, Tefty? <laughs> <laughs> breaking yeah. news with Watts. <laughs> <laughs> So at 1.21 p.m. this Monday, just now, a certain amount of minutes ago, like an hour ago, Game of Thrones tweeted, winter is coming. Mm. What does it mean? I mean, we Are all they remaking season eight? <laughs> Technically, <laughs> if you're not in Australia, winter's coming, right? Maybe they're just talking about winter coming. <laughs> yeah, literally. Winter They've is been on they're again, off again with a new series, right? Yeah, on so the one, one is definitely happening which is like the story of the targaryens so from the beginning mm. of how basically how the iron throne came about that's definitely 100 percent happening uh -oh. and that's actually being that's like written... titanic i already know how it ends well well yeah <laughs> but this is actually being written with george rr R. martin instead of him not writing it uh -huh. so, instead of writing the book he's supposed to be writing and he's also <laughs> working on the game so mm -hmm. oh yeah he's just distracted when somebody tells me george rr R. martin's working on something consider me skeptical 
<laughs> is he working on Google Stadia? Yeah. He's working yeah. on. It would explain a lot of things. He's working on everything that's not the book. Yeah. So. They're like, hey, is George. Is this like me telling my mother I cleaned the room? Yeah, I'm yeah. working on it, ma. <laughs> it's like, hey, George, why don't you finish that book? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to accept a few hundred projects first and get those yeah. done. And then I might finish I'm that book. I'm on it. Yeah. <laughs> but first, beer. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, maybe they're just talk- giving a heads up that there's going to be a- an actual announcement about the the prequel. Mm. Cool. Maybe. I- I'm excited. Maybe... Because there was originally going to be the prequel that you were just talking about, and then an also a side story called like the Egg Knight or something. Is that yeah. sound right? I, there was there was going to be something that I think was even before the Targaryen. I think that story. got canned. It did. That, get canned. Yeah. that got totally shit canned. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, yeah, now they're doing the Targaryen the story. Egg Knight. Yeah. Okay. So maybe there Which will be an announcement because you know it's all about the Iron Throne, and they're going to be telling the story of how all of that came about. Which. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting, mm-hmm. especially seeing uh, the Mad King go mad. I would like to see how they're going to do that. Yeah, mad. they're going to spend seven seasons not making any intonation toward it at all, <laughs> and, then, all and sudden... then in the last episode, <laughs> bam, he's mad. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> mad the King. The books is so good with him going mad. It was so good, which actually makes me really sad because the way they could have done Daenerys going mad would have been beautiful. But because his story of going mad was was really amazing. Yeah, I was uh, reading an article not too long ago about like the difference between the the show that we just that just finished. Um, the difference between when they were going off of the books and when they stopped going off of the books and how drastic it was, <laughs> like the quality right. of the writing. Yeah, and like all of a sudden, like instead of just like you'd see people go to battle and then you'd see you come back from battle, but you'd never actually see the battle when they were going off the books. Right. And then when they stopped going off the books, you saw every battle because they were just trying to fill time. They're like, what do we do with this? We could show the battle. Good idea. We could throw money at it. <laughs> and then they were like, yeah, so we, we're ready to go do something else. You know, we don't we don't want to make Game of Thrones be nine or ten seasons. We're going to go make Star Wars. And then recently they're like, we're not making Star Wars. <laughs> Good. They should be punished. <laughs> <laughs> so they got no, kicked off that know. project because i was worried about that i was like oh boy these i don't, guys know. Are I don't there. know if you read there was like this whole thing because they they did some interview and they were basically like we we went up to hbo didn't really know what we were doing and just like hey we can make something and then they got hired and they had no idea what they were doing they didn't know how to work with costume workers they didn't know how to work with anybody Yikes. and they basically just bluffed their way into getting a tv show Honestly, yeah. that sounds exactly like Hollywood. <laughs> just straight up. They did yeah. they did everything yeah. perfectly until they had to write stories. Yeah. And until then they, they had to do the job they were hired for. Yeah. That sounds like ninety five percent of the career is out there in Hollywood. Pretty wild. Like if George R. R. Martin had actually finished those books when he was supposed to, we'd be talking a totally different story about the Game of Thrones series. Yeah. True. So thanks, so actually, George. This is George's fault. <laughs> You yeah, should have stopped drinking the damn beers and getting distracted with your golf projects. You should have finished the book, man. Damn it. Why are you in Japan making instead, a Dark Souls game? What are you doing? <laughs> so instead, he stopped and he went to the nearest pub. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, my God. You're welcome. Oh. I think I'm, I'm into that Dark Souls game, though. I can't wait. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. I'm actually too. really glad he's working on that. Thank God. It's going to be great. I think on that uh, that uplifting note, we better end the uh, show, guys. It's good. I don't want to leave. All right. Well, quick <laughs> tips. End the show. Quick tips on basting a turkey. Go. <laughs> okay. Um, inside out. You want to go Wait inside out with a laser? Okay. What? Inside. Have out. you ever fried a turkey? My brother has. I've never done it. I'm too scared. Yeah, I've never. I've never had it either. But it sounds delicious. Yeah. It is delicious. I actually don't know much, that much about basting a turkey, to be honest. <laughs> I could Google Pretty it real ignorant. quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let me call the butterball according to this real quick. According to this quick, horrendous quick Twitter video I saw, you have to crunch up Cheetos and sprinkle them over your turkey, and apparently it comes ah, out great. Yeah, that's how it goes. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, gotcha. <laughs> and then you don't put like that. seven blocks of cheese inside, and oh, then put no, the Cheetos on top. Yeah, what about my wife whole sticks, sticks of butter? Pieces, yeah, my wife sticks like big pieces of butter between the skin and the meat. That and sounds delicious. Yeah. It is delicious. She cooks a bean turkey. She's not Wait, cooking this year, and I'm kind of upset your, about get it. your wife on to talk about <laughs> turkey. Uh, she just took the dog to get it washed. <laughs> <laughs> took the dog out to get washed. Got it. Yeah. 
<laughs> driving through the old car wash <laughs> as you do with a dog. <laughs> oh man! All right, guys. Well, that is the episode for Side Quest. Yes. It's been a yes. thrilling Thanksgiving pre-Thanksgiving edition. <laughs> Yes, this is the friends giving before the thing. Friends, beta. yeah, friends giving beta Christmas beta version of a <laughs> Christmas beta <laughs> podcast. Yes, uh, if you want side quest complete, yeah, side quest complete, guys. Yes, if you want to find more of me, you can talk to me at Teft on Twitter and catch my streams twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft. Oh, is there any news also for? Was it, we're going to announce oh, something for DCP yes. this week? Uh, DCP. So DCP is falling on Thanksgiving Day. Which, as you can imagine, might be a little questionable. Yeah. Um. So we're going to be moving it to the Friday. Friday the twenty. <sighs> no. Yes. Right. Yes. Seven. Seven. Yes. The 29th. Friday the twenty ninth. Yes. Friday. Yes, yes, yes. Question. So mark. Friday. <laughs> Friday, this Friday. We're so totally you, completely locked yes. in on this, guys. We have a hundred percent. No reservations whatsoever. Definitely. I know what's the Friday. happening. Yes, and it's definitely Friday. So don't expect to show on Thursday. Enjoy your day with your family. Or if you're not in America, just do the same thing, probably. Right. Perfect. Go to work. Be ready for you to for your drive home. There you go. Yes. If you're driving home on Saturday or something. Yeah. <laughs> After you've trampled people over in um, Walmart and claimed your sweet right. deals. Yes. If you do trample anybody in Walmart, send us pics. Yeah, we want to see. Be live. <laughs> At Twitter or at DCP Live. <laughs> if you could also be considerate, take some slow mo video and then add a little action music, you know, or like uh, yeah, some like nice. epicness. Ooh, the music from the fight scene in the Matrix would be great. <laughs> and do, do it whilst wearing a VR headset. Yes. Ooh. Amazing. Awesome. And then you could just say, I was just playing my VR game. I didn't beat anybody up. There what you are go. you talking about? Yeah. What? If you get arrested, just say I was angry because Stadia didn't work. There you go. Blame <laughs> yes. on Stadia. Watts, where can right. people uh, find you? It's George's fault. <laughs> uh, I am a Spy Thousand Watts. <laughs> you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Just look for Miss Spy Thousand Watts. Yep. And you can find yes. me over on Twitter and YouTube uh, at Arix or Arix Gaming, respectively. Um, I don't even know what's going on this week. Lots of things. More Borderlands this week. That's it. Oh, we didn't talk about Malawan Takedown. Well, well, we can do it have you even played it? No, but I wanted to find out from Eric <laughs> to know about what's going on. Oh well. Well, if you, if you still don't play it, and then I can, you can find out from me next week. I'll have played it by then. <laughs> <laughs> How long does that effect go for, Malawan Takedown? It's permanent. Uh, right? Malawan Takedown is permanent. Yeah, permanent. So you're, you're good for that one. Permanent. Okay. Right. I'm Brian Rabbit. You can find me in a trailer eating uh, Thanksgiving dinner on a horse farm. <laughs> Trailer Thanksgiving Using dinner Google horse Stadia farm. With the Google Stadia <laughs> VR headset. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Great. Awesome. All right. Well, that's the show, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. GG's. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.